Welcome back to another Artist Chamari tutorial. Today we're going to paint this beautiful blooming cactus. The materials you'll need are a 9x12 canvas. Um, you could use canvas board or paper if you want. We're going to use three brushes, one square tip and two round tip, um, one small pointy round tip as well. And today we're going to use five colors of paint. You could use four if you wanted to and leave out the black. The black is an optional step, but I ended up using the five colors. So we have a basic black and white, and then I use a dark green. I use a yellow and the magenta that we used in the first painting. So let's go ahead and get started with the first step which will be the background. To do the background, we will be using two colors, magenta and yellow, and we're just going to use a small dab of each one of these colors. We don't need very much at all. We're going to use our square tip brush, our biggest brush, and again, I'm just softening up those bristles, putting it in the water to get it nice and wet, and I'm gonna wet my canvas. Now, I didn't say this in the last video, but if you're using paper, you do not need to do this step. This is a step that you can skip. But if you're using anything with canvas, this is a step I suggest just to help the paint move a little bit smoothly. So we just get that canvas damp, um, like I said, so this the paint will go on nice and smooth. And first I'm going to go in with my magenta and I'm just loading my brush up on both sides and I'm gonna start at the bottom of the canvas and I, you see that I'm stroking left to right instead of up and down, I'm going back and forth and you're just gonna pick up paint um, and stroke that paint on there, going back and forth, loading it up about halfway up the canvas and I'm just gonna continue to load that brush up with paint, go back and forth. It's okay if they're streaking or whatever. Right now, I'm just trying to get the color on the canvas. I'm also not worried about doing the sides at this point. We're just having fun. This is like I said in the last video where we start to get those creative juices flowing and we start to get in the, the um, feel of painting and get that excitement going and the fun started. Um, so, and we, we're not stressing out about doing anything particular. We're just starting the creative process. So like I said, I'm going to go about up halfway up my canvas, or if you're doing a piece of paper, do go up about halfway. And then I'm going to switch without washing my brush. There I'm just kind of wiping the edges simply because there's a little bit of buildup with that water along the edge. But I'm going to go into my yellow next without washing my brush. And here I'm just kind of working that magenta back and forth. You see me go in directly without washing my brush and I go over the top of the magenta at that middle line because we're kind of creating a sunset type feel, right? If you look at that painting, that's at the background. Um, it's supposed to kind of represent as a sunset, the beautiful sunsets that the, the desert gets, especially in the spring. So again, without washing my brush, I'm just loading up with yellow, which mixes with the magenta that I already had in my brush to make orange. And I'm just loading that right, going up from that middle point. And I might mix a little bit of the orange right there, a little bit below it. Just like sunsets sometimes have the colors mixed in together. So I'm kind of doing that there. And once I like the effect, I'm going to wash my brush really thoroughly to make sure I get all that magenta out. If you have a rag or a paper towel, the way you can tell is if it leaves color on the rag or the towel, there's still a little bit of paint in there. So you got to keep rinsing it out. Once I get it rinsed out clean, I'm going to go into my yellow directly and now we're going to add yellow. So we go from like reddish magenta to a little bit of orange and then the top part is going to be yellow. So I'm still going to kind of mix that yellow in with the orange just so it blends really nicely. We want the colors to blend together really pretty. And then I'm just going to bring the yellow up and up 
making sure that the top part is nice and bright and just purely yellow. I'm just loading my brush up on both sides like I did before. And I'm going to make sure that my edges get really good, go along the sides there and work that paint back and forth. And I'm going to work the yellow down into the orange again just to get nice blending. Blending can be something that's difficult, but the easiest way is just to work your paint back and forth. So here I am going to blend this paint out. So I've sped the process up. I'm also going to do the sides of my canvas. Like I said, this gives it a nice professional look. It's definitely not a requirement. I don't do it on every painting, but typically like to if I can, because it does just add a little pop. If I don't end up doing it during the painting process, at the end, I'll decide another color and do it um, separately. You can always paint the sides of your painting, or excuse me, tape the sides of your painting and then do the that those edges, whatever color you want. So now that I've got my edges matching the top, I'm just going to take my brush, whatever paint's left on there, and just work it back and forth, back and forth. And you'll see as I do this, the painting just starts to smooth out and it looks really blended and nice and beautiful. So I do wash the yellow off once I get into the magenta. And once we get this all nice and smooth, we're going to pause to let it dry completely. So something fun that you can do while you're waiting for your painting to dry is get up and dance. I'm always, almost always playing music while I'm creating and it's good for me and my body to get up and shake it around. Here's my little dog singing to the music. So get up and shake your little booty while you're waiting for that painting to dry. Free up yourself, shake up your joints, sing and have a great time. That's what this is all about. Step two is going to be creating our cactus pads. The colors we're going to use is mainly our dark green. I'm also going to use a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow to add some highlight and shadow as I'm doing this. But I'm going to start with my green and I'm also going to use my big round tip brush. So I'm just softening those bristles like I always do. Kind of wet it. Mix a little of that water in with my green to create a wash because first we're going to uh, mark out where we want our cactus pads to be and that's always easier with a wash. We make a wash by mixing the water from our brush in on the edge of our paint dollop to get a nice soupy consistency. We can then use that to draw or sketch more with our brush, you see like that, it gives us a nice smooth um, fluid motion when we're trying to put where we want things to be. So here I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want my cactuses to be. If you want yours to be in a different place where you'd like more or less of them, this is your creation, your time to really have fun. So create, create as many or as few of these cactus pads as you like. I'm just kind of darkening these lines as I decide that I like the placement. I like how these two kind of go together. When you're designing your canvas, it's always good to just kind of take a look at the bigger picture. It's easy to get caught up in the small details. So I just take a minute as I'm doing these different things to kind of see where it will look the best. And if you make a mistake, remember you can always wet your brush, wash the green all the way off. Use the water from your brush and just scrub those lines off. Or you can use a spray bottle with water in it and wet the area that you want to wipe off and use a napkin or a rag and just wipe it off. But once the acrylic paint dries, it is there for good. So I'm just taking my green paint. Here I'm going to add my dollops of yellow and white like I talked about in the beginning. But I'm just taking my dark green paint and I'm going around the outside edge of my can of my cactus. And you'll see that we, we're going to create shadows and highlights as we make this these cactus pads, which makes them very beautiful. And so a part of the process that I'm doing here is creating some of those shadows and highlights, layering the acrylic paint like we talked about. 
the, the acrylic paint is great to layer to create to create beautiful effects so I'm just going to continue with my large round tip brush going into that straight dark deep green and going around the edge here I'm just doing a little live video on my Instagram as well and I'm just gonna thicken those up um, I'm just eyeballing it sometimes I'm putting a few little lines in the middle and uh, we'll continue that later here I'm just mis mixing in some yellow and some white into my green and you'll notice it gives it different a different shade there and that will create like we talked about the base for our shadows and our highlights so I go around the outer edge with a darker green and then I mix my white and my yellow in to create a lighter brighter green and I put that in the middle section and I go around each individual pad and even on the edges and I fill in with the lighter green part here I've just sped through this process so you can see it in a more timely manner these are times when I'm speeding it up that you should most likely be slowing down taking your time and really making sure that it looks pretty Oh, I got a little paint on my outfit, on my splattered on my jacket. So I just took a spray bottle, sprayed it with some water, took a rag, and wiped that right off. So I'm getting back to my pads here. And just as each pad that I do to get a kind of a different color, I remix the paint. So I have a section of the darker green, and you see I have the section where I mixed the yellow and the white in. And as I pick up to do each pad, I, I mix that around so that each pad has a little bit of a different shade. They're not all exactly the same. So you're going to mix your paint around, fill those all the way in. Give our brush a nice rinse. Now I'm just going back with the darker green. Now that I have the insides of those pads filled in and I'm just darkening those outer edges a little bit. This is what we talk about the layering process. We did that once. Now we're going to do it again. And this just makes sure that it, you see how it already gives it that kind of 3D looking effect because of the shadows and the highlights. I want to make sure to bring those around my edge and make sure all of my edges where I have the pad showing are filled in really beautifully and I'm just kind of going back with the darker green making sure everything's filled in when you're using canvas sometimes air bubbles and things can leave spaces where the canvas is still showing and you never want any of the canvas to show you want to make sure all of those areas are filled in now once we finish this it's a pause and let dry time you know what that means let's get up and dance Let's shake our little tissues, let's dance around, have some fun, and wait for our painting to dry. Here we are at step three. We're going to keep working on our beautiful cactus. Now we're going to add some highlights and some shadows. We're going to use that same green mixture that we used to fill in our pads, but we're going to add a little bit more white so we get a really nice mint green. We're also going to keep the water that we had in our brush from washing it off so it kind of creates a wash. Remember, a wash is that soupy mixture that we have. Here I'm just going to start streaking this light mint green onto my brush. I'm holding my brush at the end so that there's more flexibility and it can move more fluidly across the canvas. I'm not holding it right at the tip, I'm holding it all the way at the end. And here we just have the freedom to play around, to move our brush around on the canvas, adding highlights anywhere that we think will look nice. There's no right or wrong way to do this part. This is the part that you get to create all on your own and will make your piece completely unique because none of us will do it the same way. We're just going to dip our brush into that mint green or that light green and just go around to different parts of the cactus and add it here and there where we think it will look nice. This is where you get to be a true creator and a designer and design your piece.
however you want to do it. And I'm just loosely taking my brush, holding it at the very end and filling those lines in. I'm speeding up the process here so you can see it a little bit faster of how it looks. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just add those highlights wherever you think it will look nice. You can kind of decide what areas would be more hidden by shadows, what areas would be facing the sun or kind of stand out more. Think about different cactus that you've seen. Where are they fuller and where are they thinner? Where are they sticking out? The highlight is going to make it appear like those parts are sticking out a little bit more than the parts where it's a little bit darker. The shadow indicates something receding or going in. And naturally, when you see that with your eye, that's what you think. So now we're at the part where we've got our magenta and we're going to do the same thing with our magenta. We're using our same brush, all washed out from that mint green and we're loading it up and we're just going around kind of to the opposite sides or the opposite areas a little bit of where we put our highlight, maybe even on the opposite side on some of these pads and we're adding that magenta to indicate a shadow. We're not using a gray or a black for the shadow because the magenta makes it look prettier and it still gives it the same effect. So play around and have fun with this part too. This next step is optional, which means that you don't have to do it. You can do it if you'd like or not necessarily. It adds a little bit of pop, but not something so much that I think it's a make or break for the painting. So I'm using a tiny, tiny dab of black. This is also why I said you don't necessarily have to use black in this painting because this is the only time they were going to use our black paint. I've created a wash with my small round tip brush. And now I'm just taking that wash right around the edge of these cactuses. And you can see that it makes them stand out a little bit more it makes them um, a little bit more vibrant compared to the background. Here I'm just kind of taking that line and rubbing it back and forth so it doesn't have an abrupt edge and it's a little bit blended out. But it's definitely something that is optional and not a make or break for the painting. So if you want to do it, go right on ahead. But if you don't, feel free to skip it because it's not necessary to make the painting beautiful and look how it looks. Step four is going to be adding the buds and the blossoms. So for the buds, I'm just taking our light green mix or our green mix. It doesn't really matter if it's the dark green or the light green. And I'm just outlining little kind of half ovals, half oval shapes, doing kind of a V type shape on the bottom and then just a curvy line over the top. And I'm just going to kind of put a few of these around. Um, these are the unopened blossoms. And right now the cactuses are getting ready to bloom. It's so beautiful. And you see these buds all over. So I'm just showing them and I add a little bit more of my dark green here because I've used the majority that I have on my palette. Just putting a little dollop and I'm going to keep creating my buds. So I'm just eyeballing it like we've talked about designing your painting, figuring out where things look good. This is a part of the artistic process. We don't want to put too many buds on here because we're going to put a few blossoms as well. We don't want it to be crowded or overloaded with flowers. We want it to look balanced and nice. So I'm just using that straight green and I'm filling in those little bud bottoms there. I am using my small round tip brush that I typically always use when I'm doing the more detailed parts of the painting. If you don't have a round tip brush, you can always use a square tip. You just want to make sure that it has a sharp edge and isn't all fluffed up. So one by one, I'm just going to kind of go and fill these in because I've put two together here. I'm going to um, do one, the one that's behind a little bit darker and the one that's in front, I'm going to do lighter. Here I'm just adding a little bit looking like they're going off the canvas to give it that balance that we talked about and bringing it around the edge here. 
These are just little details that as you become a better, better painter, you love it more, you do more art, you know, makes your painting pop. And so you decide to do it just to give it that look. But in the beginning, it's definitely not necessary and something that I didn't do for a long time. Um, here, like I said, I have those two buds together. So one in the back, I used my dark green and then the one over the top, I added a little bit of white so we could see the difference and see how one kind of stands out against the other. It's that simple, just adding darks and lights together sometimes in painting makes all the difference. So now I'm gonna go in with my magenta. I've cleaned all the green out of my um, small round tip brush and I'm going to go into my, my magenta and add the flowery colorful tops to these little buds. Just really making sure I get all of that green paint out, doing the same technique I showed you before, rubbing it against a rag to make sure it's all out. And now I'm just gonna put little rounded tops where the blossoms stick out of the bud on the, the cactus blossoms there. This isn't difficult at all. It's almost like a half circle that we're doing on top of our little V cup budlet there. I'm just gonna go around one by one and add this magenta top. I'm really loading my brush up with paint because the magenta can be a little bit translucent, which means it is sometimes see-through. You need a lot of it to cover some of those darker green parts. So don't be afraid to load your brush up with a big scoop of paint to add those buds on. It'll also give it texture when it dries. If in not all of the painting, in some of the areas you use large amounts of paint, when it dries, it gives it really beautiful texture. The art collectors and fans of art, we really love to see those types of things. So again, like we've talked about in other videos, you can always move your canvas around to get those angles that are a little bit difficult. Now what I'm doing is I've loaded my brush up with magenta paint. I'm holding it at a point, creating a V and pulling those um, little petals out. Start with a V and then I just go around and around and I'm just firmly pushing, dragging my brush down in a curved fashion. And I go around and around in a circle and it creates a little um, cactus flower. This is back to the designing stage of the painting figuring out where do you want these blossoms to be? Where do you want the ones that have opened to be at? You get to choose, you are the creator, so you get to decide what you wanna do. I'm gonna put one up here. And see how I start with that V, pulling, having the pointed edge in and pulling it out in a curved way. And then I just go around and around and around filling in the spaces that have a little bit of an opening. Here, I'm deciding if I want one up here or not. I can't decide, but I end up choosing not to because I don't want it to be too busy. We still have to add, add the little cactus prickles. And once we do everything, sometimes it's busy. So now I've just loaded up more paint on my brush. I've decided that those three are enough. A lot of times in paintings, we do things in odd numbers. For whatever reason, odd numbers feel more satisfying to us to look at. So I decided to just stick with the three cactus flowers. And now I'm taking more dollops of paint on that small round tip brush. And I'm just thickening those flower petals and defining them a little bit more, curving the ends of the petals a little bit more and adding some of that detail. So here I'm just speeding up the process of really filling in those blossom petals. Um, like I said, the magenta is a little bit of a transparent color. So you can see the difference of it against like those lighter backgrounds compared to some of the darker green edges. So I'm just going over, filling in, doing another layer so it's nice and bright. Well, we're already at step five. And here we're going to create the blossom stamen. So the little white parts or yellow parts that come out of the middle of the flower. 
we're going to use white and yellow as where as well as our small round tip brush now i'm just going to load up the tip of my brush with white paint i'm going to point have the point going into the middle of my flower and then i'm just going to pull that out like we did to create the blossoms but a little bit shorter so i'm not going to come out all the way like our pink blossoms did they're just going to come out right in the middle there and our magenta my magenta paint is definitely still wet because i did quite a few layers to get that pink to pop so that's okay as we put our white down if the pink and the white mix we're mainly using the white because we want this typically they're yellow and yellow doesn't it's hard to get to stand out over the pink without laying white down first so now i'm just taking the last little bit of white that i have on my brush and I'm going around and adding some nice little white highlights on our buds, kind of on the top where the bud might be creased and folded over and then around the base of the bud there, just to give it a little bit more pop. This is the time, like I've said in the last video, the last part is always these white highlights. So I'm gonna do those white highlights on the bud. Now I'm gonna switch over to my yellow I'm gonna make sure that I rinse my brush out nicely so I don't have any pinks or greens or any other colors mixed in. I'm gonna go into my yellow. I'm still using my smaller round tip brush. And I'm gonna go right over the top of that white, doing the same motion, maybe little strokes just to make sure that I get a lot of that yellow on there. And I'm just adding the yellow right where I put the white because doing that, it will make it stand out. We'll give it more of a 3D effect. Sometimes some of those things are white in there and the yellow is actually the pollen and when it's getting pollinated or ready for pollination. So we're just gonna go and use the pointing point of our brush and yellow, add yellow to the middle of those blossoms. Once we feel satisfied with that, we're gonna move on to the next area which is gonna be to add some yellow to our cactus pads just as another little color pop. So I've switched to my big round tip brush and I just load it up with yellow and go right in, similar to how we did with the highlights and the magenta shadows earlier. I'm just gonna randomly place yellow around. There's no right or wrong way to do this. And you'll see as you start to do it, that it really makes it pop and stand out and look pretty. So I'm just taking my loaded brush and just going around in random places here. I'm going to speed the video up and you can see there's no rhyme or reason. This is another part that you cannot do right or wrong. And all of ours will be totally unique and different because we all see this part differently. So I'm just taking a little bit of my darker green and I'm just going to kind of touch up. I'm going back and forth between yellow and green. And adding highlights here I'm picking up my magenta this is going to be the last work that we do on these cactus pads so that's why I'm just kind of adding any more colors to really make them stand out be vibrant and eye-catching so the last step that we do that's all done remember we're working in layers so once I started to put on that yellow I realized that against the magenta it, the magenta wasn't as bright as I liked so I just am taking my same big round tip brush and I'm just adding a little bit more richness to the areas on the cactus pads where I had the magenta color. Maybe I'm putting a little bit more in some other places that it wasn't there, adding a little bit of shadow there under the flowers. Um, but it's just looking at it, deciding where you think it will look nice, playing around with it. This is all about play and fun and I like how it looks so I'm going back to my petals and I just decide to thicken those up. Wow we're already to our final step which is the white detail. Like I said in my last video almost every painting the white detail is going to be the last thing that we do. So we're going to go back to our small tipped round brush small round tip brush and we're going to use a dollop of white. We need for our point to stay sharp during this. So as I pick up my white, I'm going to be rolling the brush back and forth between my fingers, 
to get a nice sharp point. And then I'm simply going to start putting little V's all over my cactus. Now with this, you can put as many or as few as you like. This is again the designer, the artist preference. I'm kind of just playing around on this first one, seeing how it looks. I always like to keep play in my paintings. As much as we want it to look pretty, it's also about having fun and just spacing out for a while doing something different. So that's why there's no right or wrong way to do anything because it's about learning. It's about exploring. It's about trying new things. So with this, we can see that our paintings really come together. We start to add these little cactus prickles all around and we can really see what we are starting to design. It's amazing how these last little detail print points really make the painting come together. So I'm just gonna go around sporadically adding these, just doing these over and over, um, turning my canvas as I do it. When we do these types of things, dots, or something that we have to do repetitively over and over, a lot of times as artists, we're spinning that canvas all around and moving it around. If you, even if you're doing this on a piece of paper, you can still move your paper around. You just need to be careful if you loaded it up with paint, not to let the paint run together, but you can always move it around. And if it is that wet with paint, if you're using paper, you should definitely let it dry before you do this step or else you'll never see your little spiky prickles on your cactus. So I'm just taking my time going over and adding V's here and there and everywhere. Like I said, if your point gets a little bit dull or wide or you're not really liking it, you can always make sure to rub, run it between your fingers, roll it between your fingers with the edge pressed against your canvas and that will create a nice point for you to keep creating your little prickles with. So here I've moved on to the next one and I'm just over and over doing that shape. So here I've just sped up the process so you can see it in a little more timely manner. Go over and over. Like I said before, these parts where I speed up are typically where you'll want to take your time. That's why I have to speed it up because this is something you want to look at. You want to make sure that your point stays nice and sharp. If you mess up or you don't like something or you did too much, you can always take a wet, clean brush and erase it. So here we've come to the end. I sped through doing all those prickles, but you can see how it just really made it pop. And with those underlying shadows and highlights that we did, it just gives it a gorgeous eye-catching look. I also took the white and I went over my petals, just bringing it in and dragging it out here like I'm showing you to give each little petal of my blossoms a nice beautiful white highlight. The last step of every painting is to sign your masterpiece. So you can use that same small round tip brush with white loaded up and sign it that way or grab a marker or a pen and sign it. Make sure you memorialize this occasion when you did this so you can always look back and remember when you're trying to keep busy during the crazy COVID-19 outbreak in 2020. And here's our finished product. Doesn't it look good? So we've made it through another Artist Jamari tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed this one. It was another spring inspired painting. Since here in the desert, our spring is cactus blossoms everywhere. I think this piece came out spectacularly. I hope yours did too. I would love to see examples if you did this at home. Thank you for joining me. Stay safe, stay healthy, and blessed.